everyone, this is Jennifer Beamer, owner-operator of Actually Diet Art by Science, and this is Fiber Talk, episode number 13, and today we are talking about Zorbals. Okay, so I know what you're probably thinking, Zorbals. I was also confused with the pronunciation of this word because there's a T in it and I thought it was Zwartbels or maybe Zwartbels, um, but I was corrected by one of my guildmates, so I'm pretty sure it's Zwartbels. If anyone out there actually knows how it's pronounced, let me know. It is a sheep that was imported to Britain in the 1990s from the Netherlands, so it probably has some Germanic root. And if that's the case, then I totally understand the, the placement of the T. Um, but anyway, moving on. So let's talk about this yarn. So I wasn't familiar with it, so I asked a breeder to send me a sample. And um, it was kind of getting me acquainted with the actual fleece itself. Now, in this sample, um, there are some long bits and some short bits, and as you can see, there are some um, brown tips. And um, the rest of the lock is actually really quite dark, as you can see. There's also a lot of vegetable matter in here, because predominantly these sheep are uh, milk and meat sheep, and so the fleeces are kind of secondary to their um, real purposes. They're also apparently very good at lambing. So um, in terms of the caloric market, they're really, really good. So with a lot of um, milk sheep, milk, milk sheep, I guess, um, the, the fleeces have been utilized by hand spinners because they have um, enjoyable qualities for certain types of things like exterior wear. I also reviewed this with the Castle Milk Moritz sheep, which was more or less to be uh, a pretty little sheep out in a bucolic, um, uh, a bucolic landscape in Britain in sort of like the 17th century. Um, but it wasn't um, really prized for its fleece, and my experience with the Castle Milk Moret I had was kind of in the middle. I liked the idea of having this robust, short um, lock fleece that would be good for external wear, but after having spun over 700 yards of it, I wasn't really keen on it. So um, with this um, milk breed, I have had a much better experience. Now, though I got this fleece uh, sample, I ended up not buying the fleece, mainly because I didn't have a lot of storage at the time, and I, already, I had already bought like five other fleeces, so I didn't really have the capacity to handle more. But in terms of fleece quality, I, I would definitely get this one over the Castle Milk Moret um, as a whole fleece. Just because the, the locks themselves are very soft, they're um, a little bit triangular, although the Fleece and Fiber for Source book says that they're a little bit blocky and indistinct. And yeah, they probably are a little bit blocky and, it, well, they're definitely indistinct, if you can see in this example here. Um, but it's actually really, really soft, and one of the things that I noticed about um, the fleece versus combed top, which is what I ultimately ended up using to make this mitten, um, the combed top that's commercially produced isn't as soft, and I think this goes without saying for most of the fleeces I have uh, used personally. I prefer the fleece of those animals versus the commercial option, but sometimes you only have the commercial option available to you. So it's understandable, um, and you know, talking about it now gives you an opportunity to um, understand what you're getting into. So if you are using the commercially prepared top, just know that it's probably going to be a little coarser than if you were to able to, if you were to able 
if you were able to buy um, so if you buy the commercially produced top then just know that you're probably going to get a coarser yarn than if you were buying a whole fleece but also with these milk breeds um, the fleece quality can vary tremendously from animal to animal because they're not necessarily thinking about fleece quality so buyer beware in this case if you can get a sample of the fleece that you want to buy that would be really great not all shepherds will be able to do that but if you can I definitely recommend that now in terms of the actual yarn I ended up spinning a two ply I'd say DK weight as you can see um, I actually had to make emergency mittens for my partner. <laughs> he works outside and um, the mittens that I made for him four years ago have finally bit the dust. They've had a few repairs and there's no repairing them now. So I had to uh, turn this into some yarn um, for uh, mittens instead of yarn for some other purpose. I was initially thinking of doing mittens anyway with this. so. Um, yeah, I ended up producing a uh, so yeah. There, there's the yarn you can see. It's a two ply, fairly consistently spun, um, commercially produced t uh, comb top for this. Um, but I initially thought I was going to make mittens with it because it w it felt very sturdy but still soft enough to have against the body. Clearly it's not soft enough for next to skin garments because according to the fleece and fiber source book, this uh, page right here, They have about a 25 to 30 micron range, so if you're not particularly um, keen on slightly rougher uh, medium wools, this won't be very nice as a sweater or something where it's where worn next to skin. But if you want something that's durable, like an outer sweater or outer clothing, um, in this case mittens, it works really nicely. If you are able to buy a whole fleece, this is definitely softer um, than the commercially produced top. So this is actually probably closer to a blue face lesser type softness, although there's not as much crimp or shininess. So it doesn't quite feel the same, but it is very uh, fine to the touch. And it, depending on how you spin this, um, it's probably about a three and a half inch staple length. So you could either card this or you could comb it if you wanted with uh, little mini combs. And uh, you could produce a very soft, warm, uh, next to skin item, like a cardigan or um, sweater or jumper, as they say here in the UK. <laughs> um, in terms of actually working with it, it's very easy. It's, it's not necessarily the nicest thing to hold in your hand while you're knitting, but you do get really great st stitch definition. Um, this is size 2.25 millimeter. So you can see just how nice the stitches are. If you wanted to do a fair isle with this, um, you'd probably get a really nice crisp pattern. And because it is worsted spun and um, the, the uh, overall uh, feel of the fiber being slightly on the coarser side, makes this uh, probably a very durable, hard-wearing material. So if you wanted to go through the extra effort to make really pretty mittens that will last forever, <laughs> maybe not forever, but a really long time, then, um, you know, the extra effort to make it beautiful as well as functional uh, won't go amiss with this yarn. So that's good. The other thing about this wool is technically you can dye it. I don't know if the authors of the Fleece and Fiber source book actually dyed this, but because of the brown tips, you can over dye this. 
and it will turn out kind of like the, the Manx that I showed you in an earlier video that was dyed green. It's, it's darker in color than the Manx, which was sort of like a, a warm chocolatey brown. This one I would say is a dark brown with a warm chocolate uh, tip. Now this part will take the color more obviously, so if you wanted to over dye this with something pretty like hot pink, um, you would get a really pretty a heathered yarn out of it. Um, and where it's really dark, it won't take it as distinctly, so you might be able to run it through the drum carter once, or you can pick open the locks and spin from the lock, and you get um, a really nice, dark, saturated jewel tone as a result. I haven't dyed this, so I'm not 100% sure uh, what the effect will be, but I'm inclined to think that it will be very similar to the Manx. Now, the reason why you should test um, dark places like these is sometimes um, they don't take the color the way that you think. Uh, I'm sure there's somebody out there who could actually explain to me, or us, why specifically this on the, the chemistry side doesn't work. I expect it has something to do with the melanin in the, um, the actual fiber. So if you over dye this and it doesn't take, it probably has something to do with um, the, the color of, of the lock. But Minx, like I said, will take the dye, but the Castle Milk Mort that I had, which was slightly lighter in color than the Minx, didn't take the dye very well at all. Um, I've been dyeing for 10 years, and so this probably relates more to the fleece than to the method. So, um, yeah, there's, there's something else going on there that I haven't had time to investigate. So if anyone knows specifically why it's not taking the dye, um, let us know. <laughs> Some other details about this fleece. They're quite large. In fact, if you look at the animals, they're mostly the single color brownish black with a white strip down their nose which kind of reminds me of goats. If you've seen some uh, dark colored goats, they have that kind of patterning as well. And if you're going to get a fleece, be prepared. They can be upwards of 10 pounds straight off the animal. So depending on how well skirted it is, which again, if you don't buy from someone who normally sells the hand spinners, buyer beware that there's probably going to be a lot of second cuts and other things in there that you'll have to be mindful of. But the um, quantity that you'll get is quite significant and so there's the potential for a lot of projects. I'm sure you could use it for felting, although I haven't tried it for felting. Um, you can buy a whole fleece and share it. I don't know about the availability of Zwarbles in the United States, so that would be something to check for um, those who live in the US. You can find it, it's fairly common in the UK, but you might need to go to a rare breed specialist, someone who has a flock specifically for hand spinners, um, if you want to get any kind of guarantee with quality. Otherwise, um, anyone who is in the UK or Europe, who's uh, part of the milk meat market probably will end up having some of these sheep around so you might be able to get a fleece for really really cheap or maybe even free <laughs> everyone likes that free fleece anyway so um as part of these fiber talk videos i like to i, I well i've been trying to incorporate the knitting aspect or even a weaving aspect um to the review because I think it's really important not just to understand um, what it's like to have the fleece, have the comb top or whatever preparation, uh, what the spinning is like, uh, what kinds of textures um, and dyeing capabilities it has, but also how it turns out when you are actually using it. Because it's not just how, how pretty it looks, it's how functional it might be. So in this case, 
I'm quite confident that the mittens I'm making will be extremely effective um, at re resisting abrasion for those of you who are uh, cyclists. One of the things I'm going to do specifically with these uh, to make them extra warm is I'm going to uh, add a lining on the inside and make thrums. So this is something I've been posting on Instagram, so if you don't follow me there, there's a link below where you can go to my Instagram page to see if this crazy thought actually works the way that I think it might. Uh, and if so, it will be a very soft, warm, cozy inside, a very durable outside, and hopefully the last four years without repairs, because the current mittens that my partner has, I've had to repair every single season because it just doesn't hold up very well to holding on to handlebars all the time. So, yeah. Have any of you used Zwarbles? And if so, what has your experience been? Is it in line with mine? I haven't really encountered too many others who have used this particular fleece uh, or wool, so if you are one of those who has used it, please let us know what you did, what you liked about it, what you disliked, any kind of cautionary tales. Um, you know, you can post that in the comments below. Additionally, if you are a shepherd and want to uh, help with signal boosting, also put your comment below and uh, some contact details if you want so that people can um, get a hold of one of these fleeces. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, post some comments below if you want to see other Fiber Talk videos. I ended up putting this one a little bit ahead of some of the others, mainly because I wanted to talk about it while I was in the middle of knitting with it, while these ideas are still fresh. So um, I do have a couple of other videos that should be coming when I get a chance to sit down and actually film them for you. Um, and if you have any other tutorial requests, you can also um, put that down in the comments and I will see them and hopefully get to them in a more timely manner. Uh, those of you who follow me more regularly on Facebook and Instagram know that I am finishing up my PhD. Thanks for watching. Bye!